Listen, the side effect of the 4th of July falling on a Wednesday this year, you know, it was Wednesday of last week, side effect of that is that nobody really knew when 4th of July weekend was. Was it the weekend before the 4th? Was it the weekend after the 4th? I, for one, celebrated both. Uh, but it, what, it wasn't really clear which was the right weekend to celebrate. One thing that is clear, though, now, is that the 4th of July weekend, whenever it was, is over. We are back. Today in Washington, it was like the first day of school. Summer's over. Everybody is back and doing what they want to be doing for the next few months. The Republican-controlled House back in session today. They, of course, now are at hard at work on their jobs, jobs, jobs. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, House Republicans are naturally working on abortion this week, just like they always do. Another abortion ban they are pursuing for Washington, D.C. gets marked up tomorrow because, you know, jobs, jobs, jobs. Uh, House Republicans are also planning to symbolically fake repeal health reform again. They have already symbolically fake repealed it once, but there's nothing more important for the jobs, jobs, job abortion agenda than fake repealing health reform just one more time. So that will probably happen on Wednesday. It will, of course, have no practical effect whatsoever, but it will feel great for the Republicans when they do it. They think it's good for them in terms of messaging. In terms of the presidential contest, the Obama campaign right now is seriously ramping up their criticism of Mitt Romney as the guy who would be the only president in U.S. history with a Swiss bank account. Mr. Romney's father, who was also a rich guy when he ran for president in the 60s, he released 12 years of his tax returns when he was running. His son only released one year under duress back in January. What he released showed a Swiss bank account and holdings in the Cayman Islands, which is a notorious tax shelter, uh, as well as mysterious companies holding who knows how many Romney bucks incorporated in Bermuda for some reason. The shadiness, or at least mysteriousness, of what Mr. Romney does with all of his giant piles of money and how it is that he figures out a way to pay so little in taxes. That was the subject of a big investigative piece in Vanity Fair last week, another big investigative piece by the Associated Press later last week, and now is the subject of many attack ads, many Democratic talking points on the Sunday shows this weekend, and this new video from the Obama campaign, trying to force the Romney folks to at least try to come up with an answer to some of these questions about why he's offshored his money. So far, the Romney campaign response to this line of criticism is that it is, quote, disgusting which is a very powerful adjective when deployed in a political context. But just saying the word disgusting does not actually answer any of the questions. It is probably not a coincidence that the Mitt Romney, Swiss bank account, Cayman Islands, tax shelter, creepy zillionaire attack uh, is being full court pressed by the Democrats at the same time that the Democratic president is rolling out his own policy proposal that we should not renew the Bush tax cuts for the s richest sliver of people in this country. The president has long said that this is the policy that he supports, but today was the day that they chose to formally roll out this as a proposal. I'm calling on Congress to extend the tax cuts for the 98 percent of Americans who make less than $250,000 for another year. I believe it's time to let the tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans, folks like myself, to expire. In many ways, the fate of the tax cut for the wealthiest Americans will be decided by the outcome of the next election. My opponent will fight to keep them in place. I will fight to end them. Just as the House Republican vote this week to repeal health reform is going to have no practical effect other than messaging for the Republicans, honestly, President Obama formally proposing today that everybody get a tax cut except for rich people, that is not necessarily going to become policy just because he says he favors it, he has long favored it, but it is great messaging for the Democrats. This is a really popular policy idea. This is a policy idea that is even popular among Republicans when you poll on it. But this question puts elected Republicans in Washington in a really awful spot because Republicans are against what President Obama proposed today. They're not against it because they don't want people to have tax cuts. They're against it because they want rich people to have tax cuts. And if the rich people don't get tax cuts, they say then nobody should. Everybody's taxes are going to go up unless the rich people get a tax cut. That's their position. That's hard to sustain in political debate. 
And the Democrats know that. The whole idea is to make it look like Republicans will bend over backwards to do anything for the richest people in the country, even if it hurts everybody else. The whole idea of the Democrats doing this is to make the Republicans look ridiculous when it comes to the way that they treat the very rich. And the Romney campaign right now is doing everything it can to live up to that caricature of Republicans. At least I think they are. What happened to the Romney campaign this weekend was so bad in exactly the way they do not need things to be bad for them right now. It was so bad that I almost cannot believe that it was self-inflicted. In fact, I, I think I may believe that this was orchestrated in some way by the other side. Maybe. I don't know. Do I think that the left is this clever? I mean, do you remember Billionaires for Bush? Billionaires for Bush were my favorite anti-George W. Bush satirical idea all through the Bush years. They were this satir uh, satire troupe, essentially, that would show up to Bush campaign events and or, or fundraisers, or sometimes they would just march through the streets, professing to be billionaires in favor of President Bush and his policy. Four more wars! Four more wars! They would dress up in tuxedos and top hats and evening gowns. They'd carry around signs that said things like, taxes are not for everyone. Thank you for paying our fair share. Widen the income gap. Four more wars. Privatize everything. Look at that one in the back. Does that look familiar? Corporations are people too. Yeah, this was pre-Romney saying that. Billionaires for Bush was sort of genius. And they did survive into the Obama era when they became the anti-health reform group Billionaires for Wealth Care. They dressed up again in top hats and tails and occasionally as healthcare industry CEOs to oppose health reform with signs like, if we ain't broke, don't fix it. And let them eat Advil. Fight socialism. End Medicare now. You know, usually these guys, they announce their presence. You know, they will put out a press release, billionaires for something, something, wherever they're going to appear somewhere. But it maybe is possible that this weekend they were in the Hamptons protesting against Mitt Romney without announcing their presence. Maybe. I don't know. But how else do you explain this? Look at this. A woman in a blue chiffon dress poked her head out of a black Range Rover here in East Hampton on Sunday afternoon and yelled to an aide to Mitt Romney... Is there a VIP entrance? We are VIP. The New York Times describing Mr. Romney's motorcade, quote, passing a gleaming line of Bentleys, Porsches, and Mercedes Benzes, waiting to deposit guests who paid up to $25,000 a head to hear him speak. Where was this $3 million fundraiser that Mr. Romney was appearing at? Oh, it was at the sprawling home of Ronald O. Perelman, the billionaire financier and chairman of Revlon. Widely described as the largest estate in East Hampton, it has 40 rooms, nine fireplaces, and takes up a mile along Georgica Pond. This guy's house is so big that it has its own logo that you apparently have to wear on your clothing if you work there. Quote, Romney campaign aides and staffers in white polo shirts emblazoned with the logo of the Perelman's property, the Creeks, uh, checked off names under tight security. Doesn't your house have a logo? Uh, a few of the attendees were nice enough to speak to some of the members of the media who were assembled there. This is from the New York Times. Uh, a few cars back, Ted Conklin, the owner of the American Hotel in Sag Harbor, long a favorite of the well-off and well-known in the Hamptons, could barely contain his displeasure with Mr. Obama. He is a socialist. His idea is find a problem that doesn't exist and get government to intervene. Mr. Conklin said from inside a gold-colored Mercedes, as his wife Carol Simmons nodded in agreement, Ms. Simmons paused to highlight what she said was her husband's generous spirit. Tell them who's on your yacht this weekend. Tell him. Over Mr. Conklin's objections, Ms. Simmons disclosed that a major executive from Miramax, the movie company, was on the 75-foot yacht because she said there were no rooms left at the hotel. See, it's like the Jesus birth story with a twist. He's in swaddling clothes. I think these are protesters. I think those people talking from the gold Mercedes, right, to the, I, they have to be protesters. I mean, why else would you go out of your way to make sure that you told the reporter about who was staying on your 75-foot yacht while you were there to complain about this socialist and these invented problems this country supposedly has? The L.A. Times, and they're reporting on this, uh, described the line of Range Rovers, BMWs, Porsche Roadsters, and one gleaming cherry red Ferrari that began queuing outside of Ronald Perelman's estate. 
One New York City donor who also would not give her name said Romney needed to do a better job connecting. She says, quote, I don't think the common person is getting it. She said this from the passenger seat of a Range Rover stamped with East, East Hampton beach permits. Nobody understands why Obama is hurting them. We've got the message, she added, but my college kid, the babysitters, the nails ladies, everybody who's got the right to vote, they don't understand what's going on. I just think if you're lower income, well, one, you're not as educated. Two, they don't understand how it works. They don't understand how the systems work. They don't understand the impact. Stupid voters. The nails ladies. Ugh. College kid. You know, these billionaires for Romney protesters, they must be billionaires for Romney protesters. They covered all the news outlets, too. They gave the totally damning We Are VIP quote to the New York Times. Uh, the L.A. Times got the Nails Ladies quote. Uh, and to the Associated Press, we have a former chief of Shearson Lehman Brothers who now heads his own investment banking firm saying of Mitt Romney, quote, I think he's a plain talking guy. The Shearson Lehman Brothers investment banking firm guy, quote, made the comment as he chewed a cigar in his black Range Rover outside a Romney fundraiser expected to generate $3 million. Cigar chomping? Seriously? I mean, this has to be satire. Look at the photos from this thing. Look. Look at the caption on this. A Southampton police officer directs a Rolls Royce around the protesters outside the estate of David Koch before a fundraiser for Mitt Romney on Sunday. Actual Rolls Royce. It's an actual Porsche. An actual, I think, second in line, uh, is that a, I think, Bentley? Maybe it's another Rolls Royce? Either way, it's definitely behind an actual BMW. All of the photos and all of the coverage was from just outside these three Hamptons fundraisers because there was no press allowed inside. However, two CNN reporters did report overhearing what Mitt Romney told his cartoonishly affluent and callous Hamptons audience. He said, quote, we all care, excuse me, by the way, he said, you guys are doing fine. If you're here, by and large, you're doing just fine. See, people paying $25,000 to go to this event, by and large, Mitt Romney thinks they're all doing okay. Presumably some of them are really struggling. But by and large, the people at the $25,000 a plate fundraiser, they're doing okay. Uh, Mr. Romney um, continued to reported applause, uh, he said, quote, we all care about the poor, but what we want to do is not just help. We want to help people from becoming poor. So you there in the red Ferrari under a Mitt Romney presidency, you will never become poor. I can guarantee you that. You, Mr. Gold Mercedes, have a cigar. You're not going to become poor either. And you, Ms. VIP, read my lips. Got you covered. My friends, becoming poor is never going to be a problem for you as long as I am in office. So that's how Mitt Romney and his presidential campaign appears in the press today. And today is the day that President Obama dared Republicans to die on the political hill of tax cuts for millionaires. And it's the day they're pushing the criticism of Mitt Romney that he's offshored his millions in the Cayman Islands tax havens and in Swiss bank accounts. And the Romney side of this argument is the lady in the Range Rover screaming, we are VIP, outside the 40-room house in the Hamptons. You want to know what Mitt Romney is doing tonight? The day after those three Hamptons fundraisers with the Ferrari and all the billionaires. You want to know where he is tonight? He's doing another zillionaires fundraiser in Aspen. <laughs> But don't worry, he is turning around this whole storyline, everybody. He has just announced that he is going to be in London soon to kick off his big overseas trip. Conveniently, he will be there for the kickoff of the Olympics, just in time to see his wife's million-dollar dressage horse compete in the Olympic Games. There are only two possibilities here at this point. Either this is brilliant satire, and the Romney campaign is being punked, and I tip my hat to the billionaires for Romney or whoever you are who have pulled this off and convinced all these reporters that you were actual rich people saying things that obnoxious about Mitt Romney and what he stands for. Or there is somebody inside the Romney campaign who is trying to make Mitt Romney look as much as possible like Thurston Howell and Lovey. Could be.